Organic, 100% grass-fed beef becomes a nutritional tool to fight the effects of aging, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. Grass-fed versus grain-fed, the debate becomes almost as dirty as politics itself. There are a lot of misconceptions, myths, and predispositions on the table, but I'm wiping that all away today and bringing you the facts on grass-fed over grain-fed. First, I'm just going to lay out the straight benefits of eating beef, period, whether grass-fed or grain-fed. Second, I will outline just how, nutritionally, grass-fed outperforms grain-fed. And finally, I will dispel the grass-fed myth that grain is bad for cattle, and why it's glyphosate, not grain, that we ought to be concerned about as conscious consumers. Meat in general is one of the richest sources of complete protein on planet Earth, and every cell in the human body relies on an adequate intake of protein to heal, survive, and thrive. In fact, an article from Healthline.com states that the consumption of beef helps you build muscle mass, prevents anemia, and provides you with high levels of vitamin B12, zinc, selenium, iron, niacin, vitamin B6, and phosphorus. While these are available in pill form, none of these vitamins can be adequately absorbed by the body like they can when they come from food-based sources. So beef is good, but organic 100% grass-fed beef is a super food. Organic 100% grass-fed beef becomes a nutritional tool to fight the effects of aging, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and obesity. The scientific research I am getting ready to put out is from chapter six of Grass Fed to Finish, a gourmet production guide for grass-fed beef. I'd love it if you'd bypass Amazon and shop the book at shopshepherdist.com. But in establishing organic 100% grass-fed beef as a superfood, we need to zero in on conjugated linoleic acid, which is abbreviated CLA. CLA is an anti-carcinogenic, which means a cancer fighter. Dr. Daman of the Utah State University states that CLA is the only animal-based compound that has been shown in research trials all over the world to reduce cancer risk. Meat from 100% grass-fed beef has a 500% higher CLA content than grain-fed beef. In studies done on the benefits of conjugated linoleic acid, 11 out of 11 found CLA contributes to a decrease in cancer. Four out of five found CLA contributes to a decrease in body fat. That. Two out of two found that CLA contributes to a decrease in heart disease. Six out of six found that CLA contributes to increased immunity to disease. Two out of two found that CLA contributes to increased bone density. Three out of three found CLA contributes to a decrease in adult diabetes. In addition to being 500% higher in CLA, grass-fed beef is 400% higher in vitamin A, 300% higher in vitamin E, 75% higher in omega-3s, and 78% higher in beta carotene and beta carotene is what gives grass-fed beef its signature yellow fat cover. These vitamins and antioxidants are major anti-aging properties. Not only that, but on the flip side, omega-3 contributes to healthy brain fat. And in a case study cited by Joe Robinson, author of The Omega Diet, children who were fed high omega-3 diets had an IQ nine points higher than the average American child. So with the facts on grass-fed over grain-fed laid out, it's important for me to dispel a myth and one myth that I actually held on pretty tight to and that is grain is bad for cattle and that is simply not true. In fact, the herbivores of old would have encountered and consumed grain as part of a well-balanced diet in nature. Being herbivores, they do not need grain to live. In fact, 100% grass-fed beef is achievable and healthy, as previously mentioned. But the inclusion of grain in a pasture-based feeding program does carry its advantage for cattle. It is glyphosate, not grain, that we ought to be concerned about as health-conscious consumers. And glyphosate can be found on pasture grass and hay just as well as grains. But what's the problem with glyphosate? What is the problem with herbicides? Well, research done by the Pesticide Action Network found that glyphosate contributes to cancer, hormonal disruption, DNA damage, birth defects, and neurological disorders. Glyphosate is best known as the active ingredient in Roundup branded herbicides. According to EPA.gov, in the United States, about 280 million pounds of glyphosate are applied across roughly 290 million acres of farmland. 84% of this glyphosate load saturates crops such as corn, soybean, and cotton. Corn and soy are among the primary feedstuffs for conventionally 
finished beef in the United States. As Joe Robinson brings to light, if it's in their feed, it's in our food. And number two, if it's in our food, it's affecting our health. The new paradigm is we are what our animals eat. An evaluation of these two graphs should prove very thought-provoking. First one is showcasing the escalation of glyphosate usage since its introduction in 1974. The second is a chart from cancer.gov showing the rise in prevalence of cancer in the USA since 1975. The European Union just renewed a five-year ban on glyphosate usage, and the World Health Organization finally came out in 2010 by stating glyphosate is probably carcinogenic. And to be honest, in the United States, it is nearly impossible to avoid glyphosate exposure on some level or another. In fact, my farm is not 100% glyphosate free. I feed cattle cubes to stretch my stockpile over winter. I bring in hay for my sheep that is not organic. And while I'm actively seeking entirely organic options, the existence of these things does not keep me up at night. We cannot fix everything in one day, but there are things we can do today. And being as fruits and vegetables have the highest level of glyphosate residual, it would be important to transition to organic in that realm first. And number two is buy organic 100% grass-fed beef, because this meat will not only have a low, low risk of glyphosate residual, but it's also going to contain those aforementioned antioxidants and vitamin properties, which is going to contribute to your body's ability to detoxify existing glyphosate stores. Research has suggested that the body will store glyphosate in internal organs in cell tissue. I advise visiting eatwild.com. Find your local farmer, know what's going into your food. Don't be stifled by what you can't do, but be motivated by what you can do. As I close out this video, I want to encourage you guys to sponsor my work at shepherdessvideos.com. There you will see three tiers. At $5 and $10 per month, you will be given special access to ebooks on rotational grazing and raising sheep. At $15, you will be given full access to every single video on the platform, including business building courses and instructional content on raising sheep. Shepherdessvideos.com, shepherdessvideos.com.